Get groceries delivered to your door in as fast as an hour with Instacart. They handpick fresh groceries from your local store and let you shop multiple stores in a single order. Use our link to get free delivery on your first order over $35. Just visit cart.simpsonsiblings.com or check out the link in the description. Hey everybody, this is Sari. And this is Sean. And we are the Futurama fam. We've been watching Futurama since it first aired. And we always talk about it. We always talk about it. We only ever talk about Futurama on this podcast. Every day. All day, every day. And today, we are going to be covering the Farnsworth Parabox. This is Season 4, Episode 15. Originally aired June 8th, 2003. Directed by Ron Hewart and written by Bill Odenkirk, which is the brother of Bob Odenkirk. Ooh. Yep. And he holds a PhD in inorganic chemistry. I mean, it's good for Futurama to know some of that science. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there are no guest stars in this episode. Cool. And then we have the good old opening quote that we go over for every episode. Every episode. This one was, beats a hard kick in the face. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yep. All right, so we start out in this episode right from the get-go. The building is just exploding. Yeah. It's a great way to start an episode, you know? It's like zero to 60 right from the get-go. And Professor screams. Yeah, and nobody cares. Yeah, it's just normal business. And he's, he's like, yelling out to every god that exists. He's like, Zeus! <laughs> <laughs> Zeus, god, one of you do something. <laughs> And then there's that pause, and it says, Satan, you owe me. <laughs> oh, that's great. He, he just covers everybody. Fry is trying to convince Leela to go out with him again, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, finally, things kind of calm down. Now, one thing I wanted to go back to that, uh-huh. where she has the excuse of the sweaty boot rash. Oh, yes. I've seen this episode a bunch of times, because uh-huh. that's one of my top episodes. Every other time before, I seriously thought she said sweaty boob rash. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, it could happen. Yeah. 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 You. Either one. No. Yeah. Either one is, is a big, it's going to be a hard no for me. All right. So, Farnsworth wants them to get rid of this box. And, and that's really, you know, box is in the title. I'm pretty sure that that box is going to be important. And uh, immediately, of course, he says nobody can get into the box, so of course everybody wants to. Is this an example of the Streisand effect? Might be. That's it something. That's something we talked about in a in a previous Futurama fam episode. Was the Streisand effect? Yeah. Yeah. But one thing that was weird is he had this whole machine to create the box, mm-hmm. everything that goes into it, and he yep. said that even he doesn't know what's inside the box. Yeah, so how does he know that it's dangerous? And what was he trying to do? Yeah, I so many questions. Like, honestly, I mentioned this in my notes a little later. This could have been a full movie. Yeah. Like, there are so much to unpack here, as John Mulaney would say. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and I especially like the reaction when Zoidberg tries to get into the box because he hits him with a hammer, and it makes this really loud crack. That, I have that written down, hammer on Zoidberg. Like, yeah. Like, like, like it, you're eating lobster. It caused physical pain when I heard it because I was like, oh, God, that sounds like permanent damage. Yeah, because he just has an exoskeleton. Yeah. He doesn't ha- he's all squishy inside, so that's yeah, that's painful. Yeah. Poor, poor Zoidberg. Uh, of course, everyone wants to see inside the box since it's forbidden. And uh, so Bender and Fry make a plan. Mm-hmm. And they go through the vents, and it's really hot in the vents. And and Fry says, the butter in my pocket is melting. <laughs> Which, yeah, it's... I, I have so many questions. That we'll never know the answer that we'll to. That we'll never know the answer to. Yep, yep. Well, I never noticed before, too, his shirt shrinks. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like his belly button is yeah. showing. Yeah. All right, so they're able to get the box while Leela's sleeping. And they open the box. <laughs> And inside, <laughs> there's some tangled up Christmas lights, which Fry is very excited about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what, what was it that Bender got? Unlabeled booze. Yeah. <laughs> They're bo- and he's just 
like Fry is so excited to untangle those. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and that's from the exciting sound, too. It sounds like the old like glass bulb, <laughs> like actual light bulbs are clicking together. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, Leela goes, I don't want to keep those dopes occupied. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously she made a duplicate box for them. And uh, she says that while she's going to the coffee machine that says new chunky chicken style. Mm. Got that mm, chunky almost, chicken coffee. I almost imagined it like boba mm-hmm. where you have the extra thick straw and you get chunks coming up. But it's up. chicken <laughs> with coffee. <laughs> chunks of chicken. <laughs> Please, no. Oh, man. Which reminds me, I saw a sign on the way here that said soup, beer. And, and it, it obviously meant soup and beer, but I thought it said soup, beer. I can go for some soup beer. Which, it sounds like something Bunder would eat. Maybe new chunky chicken style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Leela is tempted by the box. And she flips the coin and says if it gets heads that she will check the box and tails if not. So, and you know what? That reminds me of when we were going to make this podcast. We we kept going back and forth. Were we going to do a Simpsons podcast or a Futurama oh, podcast? Oh, that's right. Yeah, we flipped a coin and we got tails. So we did the, the Futurama podcast. So a little fun fact for yeah. you. Yeah. It's just weird to think that we could be like just rambling about the Simpsons right now. I know. I don't even know what would it, Simpsons. I mean, S and family, they, they, I mean, they don't, there's not really any words we could use with that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Eh. Side project related. Yeah. Maybe later, maybe somewhere down the road. Anyways, I, off of that tan, yeah. I did appreciate on the coin yeah. that they showed the detail that it had the year 3000 printed oh, on really? it. Oh, really? I didn't notice that. Um, so, yeah, of course, Leela flips the coin, and she gets heads, and she decides to check the box and falls inside. She right. fell pretty easily, though. Like, yeah. Imagine if you were like standing over a well, and you look down, like, oh, that's a deep well, and you just fall right in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but unless there's know, some sort of gravitational thing going on, you know, plot mechanics. Eh, this episode is just all plot mechanics. Yes. So of course she finds herself in the same lab, but with a twist. <gasps> the colors are different. Yes. So <laughs> the the crew comes in. Uh, Bender is gold. Fry has black hair. And Leela has that reddish yeah, tint of hair. Yep. And I love how just everyone decided to dye their hair. Just everyone, except for Bender and Farnsworth, which we find out what he did. But they didn't explain why Zoidberg was blue. That, I had a question. About, I was wondering about that, too. I'm wondering if maybe his parents were going to mate, and maybe she was like, I'll mate with you, but I'm going to flip a coin. And she ended up mating with another Another crab that became Zoidberg's father that was blue. Oh, because uh, they have that whole ritual for, yeah, for mating and everything. Yeah. Ooh, we could go that deep into whole, the lore of this here. That's a that's a good future episode to do. Yeah. So yeah, they're all slightly different, and um, <laughs> a Bender goes on sort of a tangent. The alternate universe Bender, and he mentions something about video poker. Mm-hmm. And I just love the fact that he's programmed with video poker for some reason. Right. I just wrote that down. Bender can play video poker. Well, and also they talk about how anytime you create a parallel universe, it always has evil twins in it. Yeah. And then Leela goes, I'm not evil. My bone officer said so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, and then I wrote down something you said before. Farmsworth doesn't know what's in the box despite forbidding it. Yeah. So he must have known it was dangerous. Yeah. That's that's weird. And I like how Fry describes the different colors in the universe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's like that drug trip in a movie I saw when I was on a drug trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can definitely, I can hear that in his voice just perfectly. And then we have the two Farnsworths fighting with each other. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all you created was a fist parallel to your face. Oh yeah, I and wrote... then there's that punch. It's just like real slow and like, ooh, pat. yeah. <laughs> well, and I actually wrote that down. I said technically, if it's parallel, wouldn't it have never hit him at all? Ooh. So it was technically a very bad parallel punch. It would have been a perpendicular to his face. Yes, it would have been slightly, very slightly, or like a um, what what are those called where it goes like this? Oh, like a parabola. Parabola, a parabola punch. 
but it never actually meets your face. Uh, these are important things. Um, so original Leela gets the, oh wait, no. Okay. So I wrote O-R-G period Leela and it could have been either original or orange, but I guess I meant orange here. Well, remember we have Leela A and Leela 1. Yeah. Oh my God. So orange Leela gets, wait, what? <laughs> hell am i talking about here oh okay so my my notes are confusing because there's multiples of the same characters so the orange leela goes into their box and gets the original universe characters to go into theirs right so we already had that happen all right so we also have the line from fry the mongooses the fighting mongooses <laughs> he was very passionate about that i i felt like that kind of sounded like a homer line a little bit yeah just how much he was into that. Oh, and then we have the line, you people and your slight differences disgust me. <laughs> we also in that same scene, I've been as dumb as Fry. And Fry <laughs> goes, am not. Oh my God. There's so many good lines during that whole scene. So that's when they kind of reveal the coin flip aspect with um, how the orange Leela did the same thing with flipping the coin. She got tails, so she didn't check the box. Right. So that's the main differences between these two universes, which is very important to the episode. And we also learned that perfectly symmetrical violence never solved anything. Oh, no, it doesn't. No. It doesn't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love the animation with the two of them coming together perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that still hurt? <laughs> Both sides equally. Yeah, that's true. And then uh, the second universe, Fry and Leela reveal that they are married, mm -hmm. which which gets the original Fry a little frustrated. And I, I was really surprised that the Benders were the ones that got along the best. And it's because Bender loves himself so much. That's true. Yeah. 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 Now, I did have a thought, too, because... They were worried about Hermes destroying the box with mm -hmm. their universe. Mm -hmm. So you have Universe A and Universe 1. Mm -hmm. If you destroyed the box for Universe A, Universe A contains the box for Universe 1. So would they both be destroyed? It, it would be like just everything would simultaneously just poof and both universes would be gone. Yeah. It would be a para box. All because of a tiny cardboard box being crushed yeah. or burned. Yeah. Oh, and then we have uh, Fry revealing that he proposed to Leela with a diamond-studded scrunchie. <laughs> and then the, the original universe Fry said, instead, I got beat up at a Neil Diamond concert by a guy named Scrunchie. <laughs> uh, I wish they would have done a little cutscene to show that. Cause I want to see yeah, what Scrunchie looks yeah, like. Yeah. I, I just want to know what a guy named Scrunchie, like what, I'm, I'm picturing someone maybe bald, maybe in like his 50s. With a little bit of hair held on by a tie. Yeah. Like a giant scrunchie just to hold a very tiny bit of hair. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's about when they find out Hermes is going to hurl the box into the sun. And then the Zoibergs bond over their failures and they want to steal the box. Right. Which is mainly just so that they can feel some sort of level of superiority. And they start comparing lives to each other. And the mm -hmm. one's like, I design mansions and then live in them. <laughs> what? It reminded me of, it was a different episode, but when someone says, oh, you're a doctor, you should have lots of money. Oh, yeah. And he's like, what? Doctors don't make lots of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember which episode that is, but I do remember that line. Yeah. yeah. He's like, they what? They what? Also, I'm super curious about how the sky got to be different colors. I was thinking that. I mean, it, it almost has like an aurora borealis sort of swirly effect. It could have been some government thing that came down to a coin flip. Yeah, some sort of, I don't know, pollution thing. All right, and then I, I wrote down, this is a question that later gets answered, but at first I was thinking that the box was just sort of a gateway, but it actually contains the universe. Right. Which is weird because the universe would have already existed prior to the box existing. So it's almost like when he created the box, it linked them. Yeah. But it, And that's part of the paradox where 
they both simultaneously simultaneously created each other, but yeah. they also both had past existences. Yeah. It's kind of the whole time paradox, the, the causality loop, mm-hmm. where event B is what causes event A, yeah. but event A had to happen to cause event B, and it's just cyclical like that. It's as if you took the entire contents of your hard drive and copied and pasted it into your hard drive. Right. But yet that hard drive is still your hard drive because if you deleted that hard drive, your whole hard drive would cease to exist. Yeah. Mm, My brain. I think it was on Star Trek Voyager where Janeway said, first rule of understanding temporal mechanics, don't. don't." (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yep. Oh, my God. All right. So then we have the Zoidbergs walking in with the box and then just all the boxes fall on them with all these other different universes. And I just wrote, oh, this is where it gets fun. Here's where I had a problem. Mm -hmm. All those boxes on the shelves Mm -hmm. were labeled. Mm. Why didn't they just look for the unlabeled box? But didn't Zoidberg go into the box with the box? Did he? I Uh think he did. Maybe he did. Maybe that's what I missed. So if Farnsworth didn't know that there was an alternate universe in the box, why did he have all of those boxes on shelves? It was it was a scene before where they were trying. Oh, so he made okay. Yeah, because they were worried about Hermes destroying the original box. So, so they, they were trying to remake to replace it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And okay. that was and that was also too where they were. Um, he said, "Where did they hide the box?" And it was in that tank. Mm-hmm. And he said, "I hid it where no one but a crazy crazy lobster would look." Yep. Oh my God. So we have all these different alternate universes, including bobbleheads, one that looks like Grace. Um, <laughs> the one where they said, we didn't see anything. And they don't have any eyes. Ever. <laughs> but, but then how would they know what sight is if it didn't exist? Oh, maybe they knew creatures that had sight, maybe. but not them. Well, and also, how are all these based off coin flips? They are, but it could be... A coin flip that led to another coin flip. Yeah, ages and ages ago. Yeah. Yeah. So all of these different universes, they find the box in the hippie universe. (laughs) Universe 420. Yep. Oh, my gosh. They just had to do that. And he tells himself to go get a job. (laughs) Uh, And I I kind of... um, I'm a little torn because they really don't go to a ton of other universes, but I'm also kind of glad they don't spend too much time on this. They could have very easily made that the whole episode. Let's just go to this universe and this universe, and then it could have been something that would have gotten old, but they just used it as like kind of a quick couple of scenes. Yeah. So they're able to find the box, and they all go back to universe A, and I absolutely love this scene where Hermes (laughs) is hesitating. (laughs) He really thinks about this. He he looks at everybody in the airlock. Uh-huh. He's in the center of our solar system by yep. the sun. Everyone yep. would be instantly incinerated. There'd be yep. no way to trace it back to him. And he really thinks about killing everybody. <laughs> and it's not that he stops and says, no, that'd be wrong. He just goes, eh. eh. <laughs> eh I guess I'll spare everyone in the universe. Too much bureaucratic paperwork. Yep. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Kind of a little darker side to Hermes there. I know, because he's usually pretty kind and reasonable, but... Oh, yeah. Given the chance with no evidence, mm-hmm. he'll kill everybody. Yep. So, at the end of the episode, um, Leela decides to give Fry another chance, and she flips the coin but doesn't look at it. In the end, it's really about free will and not fate. Mm-hmm. That she's choosing this. It, she's not making it up to chance. Yeah. Yeah. Because we see not just Leela, but everybody, how much is given up to chance and not just personal decision. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that's the end of this crazy, crazy episode. This is definitely one of my top Futurama episodes. Yeah. I've seen it a bunch of times. And I, I looked it up, and it is on pretty much every top 10 list or top 20 list. Yeah. If you look on the internet, it's just on all the lists because it's... 
Well, and the other thing, too, that one of the lists goes into is that you don't have to know a ton about Futurama to just understand this whole episode yeah. and just appreciate it. It's a really good – if you wanted to get into Futurama and didn't know where to start and wanted just one really good episode, this is a good spot. Yeah. Or to, like, introduce it to a friend. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's a lot of good character moments, too. Like, you know exactly – you know each character's personality from this episode. You know Bender. You know Farnsworth. All of his kooky things he goes into, the whole brain, mm-hmm. you know, surgery I was, thing. I was thinking the two Benders when they're walking down the street and they hug and they steal each other's wallets. Yeah. Yeah. You you know all these – and Fry's sort of slacker personality and his – the butter in his pockets and – there, you just you know so much about each character just from this episode. That's Everyone is on point. How shallow the two Amys are together. Exactly. Yep. And how Hermes is sort of obsessed with doing things by the book. He even has a checklist for like, yeah, necessary things. Box check. <laughs> Son, that's check. a big check. <laughs> oh man, this is it's just a fantastic episode. Oh. Glad we got to do this one. Yeah, this was a great one. I'm really glad we chose this Futurama episode out of all the Futurama episodes we will eventually be doing on this Futurama podcast. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so this is really weird. I have this written down. I'm not really sure why. It says that our next episode is season 25, episode 20. There weren't that many seasons of Futurama. No, it, it, was it eight seasons? Yeah, so it says season 25, episode 20, Brick Like Me. Which is a Simpsons episode. I don't know why I wrote that as our next episode, but I'll go ahead and just put that in there and we'll just go with it. Okay. It might be good to mix things up a bit. Yeah. For, for at least one episode, do a different yeah, show. Yeah, for Futurama fam. So, yeah. yeah. We're well, we're happy you, you came over here and listened to our first episode of Futurama fam. Mm-hmm. And uh, until then, happy, happy April, April Fools, everybody. everybody.